All right. Um, appreciate you all joining us. If you have a question for Mr. Schlenk, please uh, raise your hand within Zoom if that's working. If not, raise your hand on your screen. <laughs> Uh, hey, there we go. We will get started today. And, and if I've missed you with recording access and you need it, either send me something in the chat or I can send it to you afterwards. But let's get started with uh, Sarah. Hey, Travis, how are you? I'm well, how are you, Sarah? I'm good. Um, I just wanted to check in on how DeAndre Hunter's um, health is and if he's ready to go for camp. Uh, DeAndre's doing well. He's been back here in town for the last uh, three or four weeks. Um, he will not be a full participant at the start of the camp. We're going to kind of ease him back in, but he's been playing one-on-one, -on -one, um, but we anticipate him to be full go at the start of the season. Chris Kirshner. Hey, Travis, um, what's the latest on negotiations with Kevin and do you anticipate something getting done before the start of the season or is that uh, at least the hope? Yeah, certainly that, that's the hope to try to get something done. Uh, negotiations are ongoing with he and his representatives um, and talked to his agent as a matter of fact last night. Um, you know, we're, as I've said all along, you know, we're hopeful to be able to get something done with Kevin long term. Um, but if we don't, um, that's okay too. You know, as we saw, you know, last year with John, that certainly doesn't mean that, you know, we are not going to work hard next year in free agency to try to get Kevin wrapped up long-term. Um, you know, these things are, they're, they're kind of hard to predict on how things will go. Um, you know, they're kind of hard to do. You know, I've got a, a young player who's continuing to get better and, you know, wants to be paid appropriately. And, um, so we'll, we'll, we're hopeful, but um, I don't have a sense really one way or the other, of, you know, if it'll get done to be candid with you, but we're hopeful. And if it doesn't, it certainly doesn't mean that um, we won't work to get it done next year. Let's go back to Sarah. Hey, Travis. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about some of the things that you like about some of the guys that you've signed to, to camp deals and just kind of what they need to show you and, and Nate and I guess all the guys in camp? Yeah, so a couple of them um, are, are guys that we've signed to exhibit 10 deals that will play in College Park. Um, you know, the way the system works, you have to bring them to camp for a certain number of days to have their rights in College Park. So AJ, young player out of South Carolina, you know, very energetic defensive player. Um, you know, he's one of them. And then uh, Hamilton, um, again, is another guy that signed an Exhibit 10 with us who will be down in College Park playing with us. He was an athletic big guy. Um, and then the two guys that we've signed um, to come in and kind of compete for the 15th spot, um, uh, Timothy Luwalu, um, he's actually dealing with some visa stuff. We're hopeful that we'll get him in uh, the first part of next week, but he's currently still in France as we work to get his visa to come uh, to the States. Um, and then obviously uh, Okafor has been here for the past, I guess not obviously you guys, but he's been, been in for the last <laughs> 10 days or so uh, working out with the guys. Um, you know, he's in great shape. Um, so, you know, we'll give him an opportunity to compete for that spot as well. We will um, probably about halfway through camp wave a couple guys and sign a couple more guys to exhibit 10. So you'll see some roster moves between now and then. And again, that's just based on the limited number of spots we have and you know what we have to do to get guys rights for college parks. Kevin Chenard. Hi, Travis. How do you see uh, your off-season acquisitions, most notably Gorgie Jang and DeLon Wright fitting in? Well, you know, one of the big things that's been, um, you know, I don't know what's the right way to say this. One of the things that's uh, we've been trying to address a lot of different ways over the last few years has been uh, backup point guard. Um, and then, you know, that it's something we really wanted to focus in on this year. And we feel very good about the line. Obviously, he, you know, it's, it's six foot five. He's got the size to be able to play on and off the ball. Um, you know, he, he's got a very high basketball IQ, a uh, good defensive player, you know, has one of the knocks on him coming into the league was, you know, his shooting, but he's turned into a very reliable three-point shooter. So we're excited to add him. 
Um, and then Gorgie, you know, with O being out, you know, the first, you know, three or four months, um, you know, we wanted to go out and get a, get a solid backup. Um, and, you know, he brings a little bit of the stuff that Dwayne used to bring to us. You know, Gorgie's turned himself into a reliable, especially from the corners, three-point shooter. Uh, he's a, a very good passer. Um, so, you know, we're excited to bring him in as well. Bob Rathbun. Hey, Travis, is there anyone else other than uh, Hunter that's not a full go at the start? Yeah, we have a, a few other guys that we're going to kind of bring along slowly. Uh, obviously, O is not going to be a full go. Um, and, you know, hopefully he'll be ready at the end of December, uh, 1st of January, coming off his soldier, soldier surgery. It's good. Easy for me to say. Um, you know, Kevin had a procedure on his ankle, um, cleaned out uh, after the season. Um, he's kind of on the same track as DeAndre. Uh, he'll be participating in camp, but not a full go. Um, but we're going to build him up. Hopefully at the start of the season, he'll be full go. Um, and then also uh, Bogey uh, is in the same boat. Uh, he obviously, as you guys all know, was dealing with the tendon stuff in his knee. Um, he had some um, PRP injections or stem cell injections in it over the summer. Um, so, you know, he's been playing one-on-one -on -one with those guys. And so we'll bring him along slowly at the start of the camp. And again, the expectation is that he'll be hundred percent go at the start of the start of the season. Got and then Clint, I guess, oh, I, yeah, okay. Clint, I forgot about, uh, you know, Clint had the PRP injection in his Achilles, the same procedure Cam had done. Um, and again, we'll, we'll bring him along slowly uh, with the hope of having him built up, ready to go at the start of the season. Back to Chris. Where do things stand in, uh, for the team in terms of vaccination rate? Uh, we are going to be 100% vaccinated again this year. Uh, we have uh, one player who's going to receive his second shot next year or next year, next week. Um, so before the regular season starts, we'll be fully vaccinated. And obviously the whole staff's vaccinated. Zach Klein. Hey, Trev, uh, if I talk to you in three and a half weeks from now, right before the opener, what's the one thing you'll say, yeah, I'm glad we accomplished this during preseason camp? Uh Got and stayed healthy. Raphael Haynes. That's it. Oh, go ahead, Zach. Oh, okay. Raphael. Well, let's assume, which real quick, let's follow up. Let's assume you stay healthy. Uh, what is it, I guess, in terms of on the court you want to see um, the advance over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, um, you know, we've got obviously a couple of new guys that are going to be playing pretty big roles on our team with Delon um, and Gorgie. Um, so, you know, getting those guys acclimated with our group. Um, and then, you know, I'm excited about our young guys. You know, we, we feel good about the two young guys we have and being able to see those guys, um, you know, play, play NBA minutes is going to be exciting over the, you know, these four preseason games we have. Raphael Haynes. Hey, Travis, Raphael Haynes with a three-point conversion. I do apologize if this has been asked already, but when you look at the team and how it's been constructed over the last four to five years, then you um, you all make the Eastern Conference Finals. Is this season make the finals or it's a disappointing season? Uh, no, <laughs> no, certainly not. Um, listen, I, it, it's really hard to get to the NBA Finals. Um, you know, obviously only two teams get there every year. Uh, you know, for us this year, as far as expectations, and, and I think I said this, um, you know, in the summer, at least to a few of you, you know, going into this season, we obviously want to be very competitive and build off last year. Um, but I, I think you're, you're living in a bit of a fantasy world if you, you're going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals or Finals every year, even if you are a very good team. Um, so for us, you know, our, our goal is to be back into the playoffs, hopefully have home court advantage, you know, this time around the playoffs. And once we get there, whether or not we have home court or not, uh, go, go, ahead, go out there and make some noise uh, like we did last year. So, you know, for us, is we're still a young team. Obviously, we, you know, sprinkled in some veterans the last couple of years and we feel good about our team. But, you know, you, you have to get some breaks in the playoffs. You know, we last year, you know, as I've said before, you know, we got Philly with Joel on the league, and that 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 was helpful. Um, you know, in 2015, when I was still in Golden State, the first time we won it, 
you know, I think we played, you know, the first three rounds, teams were missing players and, you know, people said we got lucky. Well, that's fine. We won a championship getting lucky and you need to get lucky. Emmanuel Glaze. Hey, Travis, how's it been this year um, being able to work with Nate in the offseason? Last year you had him. He was assistant. He took over in the middle of the season. But now after the playoffs and, and having an offseason and a draft, how's it been with you guys, the chemistry, uh, working together this offseason going into this season? Uh, good. You know, Nate, I um, mean, you guys have the opportunity to talk to him every day. You know, he, he's, he's a completely level-headed man. Um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a good person, um, straightforward, honest, much like myself. So, you know, we have we have a very good rapport, you know, when we sit down and have talks about the team or talks about players. Um, I would say the vast majority of the time, you know, our opinions are the same. So, you know, we see the game kind of similarly. Similarly, we want to have, you know, build this franchise, you know, the same way. So it, it's we really haven't had very many hiccups at all, um, you know, when all our dialogues back and forth. So. Back to Chris. Uh, just to clarify something on Onyeka, is the goal now for him to be cleared by the end of December instead of the end of January? That's his own personal goal. Um, you know, he, he, he's, he's marked uh, the end of December on, on his personal calendar. Um, and then he's been, he's been back here for the past two months working his tail off and things are going great. Um, but you know, we're, we're still, we're still going to shoot to have him back in that January range. And if he gets back, comes back early, great. Um, but that, that's what he's marked on his calendar. And I also wanted to ask, what do you see as the next step for Trey's development? I think, you know, what we saw from Trey last year, as far as, you know, what, doing less, but to have more team success, you know, trusting his teammates more. I think just building off that is really continuing the right trend, you know, continuing to be a little more vocal on the floor, you know, as a point guard, getting people in the right places, um, you know, continuing to realize when somebody's got it going and, you know, the guy hits two or three shots in a row coming down and saying, okay, intentionally we're going to run another play for that guy because he's hit three in a row, you know, just little things like that, just con controlling the game offensively and then, you know, continuing defensively to, to give effort. Um, you know, those, those are the big things and, you know, they're all completely doable and I have a lot of confidence that he's going to continue to get better at those things. Paul Newberry. Following up on that, Travis, how concerned are you that uh, Trey might take up professional wrestling? And what would uh, what was your uh, what was your view of his uh, appearance there? Uh, return to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> well, the the professional wrestlings there they uh, they know how to sell tickets and rile a crowd up, and they did a great job there. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you one follow to that? Those in all seriousness, this Trey seems to kind of uh, obviously relish that you know centerpiece and being the guy that people cheer or boo. Uh, how important to have a guy kind of like that, that sort of em embraces that and, and seems to even thrive on it? Yeah, no, listen, it's, it's a testament to him. You know, it's something he's been dealing with his whole career. Um, you know, he, he, as you said, he, he wants that moment. Um, you know, he thrives in that. And to, to have the mental makeup to be able to go out there and, you know, not – shrink in that moment but to actually embrace it, it it's really important it gives obviously it gives him a ton of confidence but it gives our teammates confidence his teammates confidence to be in that situation so um you know we're obviously we're obviously excited about it and you know we we hope that you know for the forecoming future that we're in situations big games on the road or at home uh, to have a player you know that's not going to shrink in that moment it, it gives you a level of comfort Okay, uh, there are currently no hands raised. Um, if you have a question for, uh, let's go to Deshaun Tate. Uh, good morning, Travis. Uh, if anything at all, what is different for you uh, approaching this season at this, uh, approaching the season at this part of the year uh, that may be different from around this time during the season as prior? Um, 
I don't know if there's a whole lot different about how we we approach things. Um, you know, last year was a, a, you know obviously different because of the whole COVID situation. And, um, you know, we still have a little bit of that this year. We're, we're waiting on the league to give us all our final protocols for the season. Um, and what all that's going to look like. So I, I guess that makes it a little different than some of the years. Um, you know, as far as, as we've talked about, you know, we made the transition last year from being more of a development team to, you know, more of a com competing phase for the franchise. And so that that's the same as last year. Um, but uh, you know, other than, you know, things that are out of our control, like, you know, what the protocol is going to be like, I think it's pretty similar to last year. Back to Kevin Chenard. You mentioned before, you know, the, the injury status of the players and hopefully to have them ready at the beginning of the regular season. If they are all healthy, do you worry at all about maybe having too many healthy players, like uh, not too many healthy players, but but too deep of a team, like, uh, you know, too many players who are sort of rotation worthy. Is that ever an issue? Well, not for my job. It might be for coach's job. Uh, <laughs> no, um, listen, I think what you saw and, you know, this is one of the things we focus on, too, with with our guys is last year, you know, guys gave up their personal stats for team success. You know, obviously, most notably Trey and John. Um, you know, all, all our guys, they want to win here. They want to get to the top of the mountain. And I think what they saw last year, what they learned last year is that, you know, we do have a deep team and we have on any given night, a bunch of guys can step up and go out and get 20 points, 25 points. And, you know, our guys relish that when guys were on the bench, they're up cheering for their teammates. Um, so I think our guys have that team first, um, you know, we mentality. Um, and when you have that sort of chemistry, um, you, you don't run into those issues um, where you have guys upset about, you know, maybe not getting the minutes they want or the shots they want. Um, you know, we have, we have veteran guys that understand that, you know, there's younger guys that are earlier in their career and, and they accept those roles like Gallo did last year coming into this situation, you know, going from a starter to a bench role. So uh, it, it's a special thing, but when, when guys buy into that, uh, it really makes the season fun. Terrence Moore. Hi, Travis. Hello, sir. Given what you guys did last year, I, I'm sure that the average – Hawks fan is going to expect you guys to do at least as well or somewhere in the vicinity. I mean, rightfully or wrongfully, I know the Eastern Conference has gotten a lot tougher than it was last year. Is that something that is a, a positive for you guys to have the fan expectations to be where it is right now? Or is that, I get, hate to use the term negative, but I mean, is that, would that be a drawback that you're going to have all these great expectations this year? And, and then, as you say, you, know, you want to make noise. But I think the average fan probably would be thinking bigger than that. No, well, first of all, the fact that the fans are excited is a positive, right? We want we want the fan base to be excited about that. And unfortunately, in this business, there's only two two outcomes really at the end of the day, right? You either exceed expectations or you underachieve. Um, so that's the reality. And there are going to be some years when we underachieve, and there are going to be some years when we overachieve. Uh, we hope that we overachieve more than we underachieve. Um, but, you know, those are the two outcomes of the season. But what we saw last year from the community, the city of Atlanta, um, and the support we got from them, especially the second half of the season as we started letting more fans in and just really the buzz around town, that's – it's our job as an organization to keep that going, to keep the interest, um, to keep people talking about us, to keep people excited about us. Um, and, you know, hopefully that we'll be able to do that, um, whether or not we get to the Eastern Conference Finals or the second round. Um, hopefully we can keep that sort of excitement in, in the community. Raphael. Travis, when you look at the team now, the not necessarily the namesake, but just the way the team is built, the type of players you have, was this the vision when you first came in and you know took over as the GM for the Hawks? Uh yeah. I mean, listen, you guys have heard me say this from my opening day press conference to now. You know, we we want to play an exciting brand of basketball. We want to have high character individuals. We want to have, you know, 
four and in, in a perfect world, five guys out on the floor that all, all can dribble, pass, and shoot. You know, I've said a few times too, it, the ideal team would be to have a bunch of six foot nine guys out there, right? You know, versatility. Um, you know, clearly we're not going to have that with a six one point guard who's going to be on the floor. But, um, you know, you look at the, you know, Jalen, who we drafted this year, you know, six foot nine with perimeter skills. Um, you know, he's shown a lot of flashes out here in the pickup games. Obviously, he was very good in the summer league. You know, the more guys that we can continue to add like that, um, that, that that's kind of, in a nutshell, my vision, you know, the versatility to be able to have guys out there that can switch, that all can play inside or outside. Um, that's when you become really difficult to guard in the NBA when you have multiple guys that can go out there and create for themselves or create for others. Do we have any final questions for Travis this morning? Okay. Thank you for your time, Travis. And yeah, thank you, thank everybody. you guys for showing up. And for those of you that actually combed your hair before you came on the Zoom, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about out there, Kevin, Chris. <laughs> <laughs>